so Nicola, you have the floor to tell us about the freedom from religion. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you to Adoc. Uh, uh, for uh, inviting me. Thank you most of all to Adoc for organizing this and uh, for, your, uh, for your work. Uh, I was uh, very, very pleased to have had the chance uh, to uh, contribute a little bit uh, organizationally to the Brussels meeting uh, and uh, I am extremely pleased this time to be able to be here in person. Um, so thank you, Randa, thank you, Ayman, uh, for this opportunity. Um, I would ask the moderator to, to call me at 10 so that I don't have to look at my watch. Okay, great. Uh, he can do that for me. Um, my background is in international law. My doctorate long, long, long line time ago was in that. Uh, and I thought I might say something about the international law situation uh, of freedom of religion, but this was uh, exactly what uh, my, uh, my predecessor covered, so I'm very happy uh, not, to, not to go into that. Um, I think uh, uh, the, um, it's worth remembering uh, that uh, freedom of religion includes uh, freedom not to profess one. Uh, not just to change one, also not to profess one. And I think that's something that um, it's uh, relegated to the technical, um, to the technical comments made by this or that committee uh, but I think it's something that is worth bringing back uh, to the fourth of the campaign uh, for human rights. Uh, I have, uh, uh, it's, it's been anticipated, um, I have uh, 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 thought and I would propose to ad hoc that uh, uh, in, the, in the context of its overall work for secularism, uh, for uh, modernity, uh, and for reform of the way people think, that we adopt uh, together and that we spread the adoption of uh, expressly uh, in open source, so asking others to adopt without uh, uh, recognition or that it's, it comes from any particular source, um, the concept of the campaign for freedom from religion. Uh, it is uh, by definition a little controversial as an issue. But it, uh, uh, because it presents things as if religion in itself was, uh, uh, was a yoke or something to be free from. But I think if we, if we are uh, explicit uh, to the risk of seeing extreme, then uh, it, uh, it, it can contribute to change, uh, to change the narrative a bit. I mean, my, it was mentioned my organization is called No Peace Without Justice. And uh, we work in war zones, and uh, sometimes we have cars, you know, the jeeps with written no peace without justice on them as we drive along, and people say, what, well, you're against peace? Uh, and uh, and it, it helps, it helps to have a slogan, a campaign that it is, a little bit makes people pause. So that is my proposal to ad hoc, that uh, uh, as a wider part of the work, they, they, they adopt uh, this slogan and they make it their own and they make it other people's. Uh, um, I think uh, uh, the, uh, the time is, uh, is, is right not because of the rise in uh, uh, fundamentalism and in violence. I think the, right, the time is right because this is a right we used to have. I mean, you mentioned uh, Voltaire and Spinoza, but you had Averroé, I'm sorry, you had uh, Ibn Rashid uh, before any of us had any of this. And, uh, and the concept of multiple truths. I mean, you had this in the Arab world. Okay, he was Spanish, and the Spanish can claim him, but he was still an Arab uh, uh, leader and thinker. And, uh, and that existed uh, within Islam uh, before it existed uh, within, uh, certainly within this environment we're in in Rome. Um, I went to school just across the road here at the Collegio Romano, and uh, which was where uh, uh, Galileo used to work. And in fact, the school is the same. Basically, the lab is the same the one he used to work in. Um, and uh, and uh, there was no freedom. Uh, even as recently as a few hundred years ago uh, here, there was, uh, uh, and honor killings were legal uh, in Italy until uh, literally a few de decades ago. Um, 
Uh, and uh, I think in terms of uh, uh, freedom of thought and freedom of thought from um, uh, religious authorities, I think Islam was uh, uh, one of the world leader uh, until uh, a few centuries ago, and which is, um, in my mind, and the way I grew up in this city uh, quite recently. So I think we have to reclaim that. Uh, and we have to reclaim that not only with reference to Islamic fundamentalism and, or Islamist policy uh, or politics, but we have to reclaim it uh, also with reference uh, to um, the you know, our European, uh, even you know, pe people think it's, uh, liberal people think it's legitimate to have laws against uh, um, uh, genocide denial and Holocaust denial. Um, and, uh, and we have to think about whether that is a, a, a reasonable and whether is, that, is, that is a way in which we want the uh, Holocaust uh, to be in the memory of the Holocaust to be respected and protected. Um, I think in the last 10 years, certainly in the 21st century, uh, freedom uh, has uh, taken a few hits uh, as, uh, a, a, as something that needs to be uh, protected and respected and, and thought uh, about in policy uh, on a daily basis. And uh, um, I want to again give you another, in addition to freedom from religion, I want to give you a, another thought that I've been working on for a little while. Uh, again, no copyright, and that, um, which is that rights uh, are not what needs to be protected. What needs to be protected is liberty, is freedom. And the rights exist to protect those freedoms by law. Um, and uh, it's complicated in French because droit and droit are the same word, but I think um, when we think about rights, we have to think about the underpinning freedom. And that's why there is freedom, a uh, right to thought doesn't make any sense. It's freedom of thought, because it's impossible to restrict uh, what people think. But uh, freedom of expression requires a right to free expression. And uh, so as we think about laws, and what do they protect? I like very much the idea that blasphemy laws protect ideas and not uh, people, uh, restrict ideas and restrict people. Um, we have to think about what freedoms do, um, do the laws protect by creating a right. Now, I don't think there is a legitimate right not to be offended by other people's thoughts. And because there is no freedom not to be offended. So as we think about laws and what they mean and what they do, I think this is a, it's a useful way of thinking it. And, I, and so I offer it to you um, as also as a campaign idea. Freedoms is what uh, needs to be protected. Rights is the way we protect those freedoms by law. Blasphemy, blasphemy laws neither protect freedoms nor uh, protect any uh, right. So they, they, um, I think the, the connection between authoritarianism and, uh, and, and blasphemy is evident. Where there is only one uh, power, there is an attempt to have only one truth. And, uh, and so it doesn't even require um, uh, the historical evidence, which is yet obvious, uh, but it, even conceptually, I think this is, uh, this is what needs to be fought, which is only one truth, which is what uh, Averroé or Ibn Rashid, excuse my pronunciation, first said, uh, more than one truth. 